By the time the Mansipal S tale concludes, the sun is setting. The host, seeking to fulfill his original plan, turns to the parson, asking him to conclude a huge matter with the final tale. The parson replies that he will tell no fable, referencing Paul S. advice to Timothy against turning from truth to fables and other trivialities. The parson promises to discuss morality and virtue. He jokes about not knowing the alliterative poetry tradition of the South, leaving his tale to Clark's, as he is not textual. Everyone agrees that ending the project with such a tale is fitting, and asks the host to instruct the parson to tell the final tale. The host urges the parson to begin before sunset. The parson's tale is not a traditional story, but a lengthy medieval sermon on penitence. The sermon's first part defines the three components of penitence contrition, confession, and satisfaction, elaborating on the causes of contrition with several biblical examples. The second part discusses confession. Described as the truthful revelation of a sinner's sins to a priest. The parson explains sin as the outcome of the struggle between body and soul for dominance, resulting in two types of sin venial, minor sins, and deadly, serious sins. The third part examines each of the seven deadly sins as branches of a tree, with pride as the trunk. Pride is the worst sin, as it gives rise to the others wrath, envy, sloth, avarice, gluttony, and lust. Each sin's description is followed by its spiritual remedy, and the parson outlines the rules for oral confession. Penitence involves several conditions, including the severity of the sin, the urgency of contrition, and the frequency of the sin. The result of true penitence is goodness and redemption in Christ. The final lines of the sermon suggest a vision of paradise. Bodies that were once foul and dark become brighter than the sun. Sick and feeble bodies become immortal and whole, and in a place free from hunger, thirst, or cold, souls are nourished by the perfect knowledge of God. This paradise, the tale concludes, is only attainable through spiritual poverty and avoidance of sin. In the retraction, the narrator speaks in the first person, praying that anyone who reads this little treats, little treatise probably referring to the parson's tale, thank Jesus Christ if they find anything they like. If they find anything displeasing, they should attribute it to the narrator's ignorance, not his intent. He would have written better if he had the skill. The narrator asks readers to pray for him, so Christ may have mercy on his sins and forgive his trespasses, particularly those in his translations of worldly vanities. The Book of Troilus, the Book of Fame, the Book of the Twenty-Five Ladies, the Book of the Duchess, the Book of the Parliament of Birds, and the Tales of Canterbury those that Sonan into Sine tend toward sin. However, the narrator thanks Christ for his translation of Bethius and other books of saints, legends, and homilies, hoping Christ will grant him grace for penitence, confession, and satisfaction through the benign grace of the King of Kings, so that he may be un of hem at the day of doom, that shall be saved, one of those who shall be saved at the day of judgment. The book concludes with a short Latin prayer and amen, announcing that the tales of Canterbury, compiled by Geoffrey Chaucer, have ended, adding, of whose so lurgers of Christ have mercy.